Doctor Who Legacy, The Orion Express, starring Julian Bain and Caroline Moraham. Adapted from a story written by Misha Launstein. the kitchen exactly? Ah, should be just through there on the left. Isn't that where my bedroom is? No, not when you're hungry. The machine works, but check the fridge first. There might be something not so appealing in there. <laughs> right, we've landed. Earth, circa 400 years in your future. Give or take a couple of light years. I've got us tickets to the famous Orion Express. Charming, I'm sure. Bit dull. Both sides of the street are lined with grey boxes, I'd say. 50 metres long and 10 metres high. Like a giant waffle iron. How can it be night time with all of this light? Look, there's your answer. That's the Earth. I thought... No, we're on a space station. This is the loading bay of a cargo ship. See those layers? Those are platforms, just like the one we're standing on. And these grey boxes are the cargo containers. There's probably a crane or something that lifts them off the ground and slots them in, one on top of the other. Yes, rather like a shipyard. And we're standing on one of them. Uh, maybe we better get off? Ah, it should be quite safe. If we get lifted, we'll just walk back to the TARDIS and take off again. Um, Doctor? That one they're lifting has the TARDIS on it. What? Of all the timing... Oh, come. We've got to find out who's in charge. How do you know which way to go? I don't. Now, come on. Doctor! The floor section just split! Doctor! Damn, too late. It split too fast. Sam, here, catch... TARDIS is on 49. Use the keys to get back in. I'll meet you as soon as I can. What do you mean? Ah! Well, that's just great. The TARDIS is halfway up this thing and I'm right at the bottom. There better be an elevator. Now, if I was a space station, where would I put the... Ah... There's the elevator. Floor, please. Control room. Destination, floor 100. What's that on level one? Looks like some kind of animal. It's a lot bigger than a rat. It's very colorful, too. Might be some kind of mutated species. Whatever it is, it won't survive the gas. Close the hatch. Listen, you've got to stop my friends on that cargo hold. Who are you? Unauthorized civilians aren't allowed here. You've accidentally loaded a piece of property that belongs to me, along with a friend of mine. The door is closed. Everything is automated from now on. If your friend is aboard that cargo ship, then they're already dead. No, that won't do. There must be something that can be done. Contact the pilot, now. Everything is automated. I'll try, but he might not get the message for quite a while. I can't even stop the takeoff because another ship is going to be landing. I'm sorry about your friend. Your property will be offloaded when the ship gets to Venus. Fantastic. Looks like I'm going on a space journey. 
Worst case scenario, I get off at the next stop and wait for the doctor to catch up to me. Unless it takes a month and I starve to death. First I catch a virus in Gallifrey and now this. Just like the old days. Now, let's see. Maybe there's an emergency phone or something. Anyone here? There must be something in these lockers that I can use. First aid kits, handy. Fire hose. Axe, but no food. Oh, there's a ladder. Good. Now, up or down? Looks like I can go all the way to the top level of the cargo bay or down into a dark hole. Maybe there's a service hatch down there that I could climb out of. Sterilization of level one commencing in 20 seconds. Oh, no. Pest control. 17. Tell me, what's the fastest way to get to Venus? The Orion Express is leaving in one hour. Will it get to Venus before the freighter they just left? Oh, certainly. Those freighters are slower than the Orion. You'll get there about a day before it does. Good. My friend won't be joining me on this leg of the journey. But if all goes well, she'll be boarding the ship on Venus. Can you please make sure they don't give her seat away? Certainly, Mr. Smith. Put someone in that seat who's only going as far as Venus. Seven. Six, Up then, and fast. Five, four. Three, oh God, two, I've got to hurry up. One. Sterilization of level two, commencing in twenty seconds. Ah, oh, finally, my seat. I would have hoped not to be alone for this ride. Sam should be here. Ah, oh, well, no matter. She must be used to this if she traveled for even a brief time with my future self. Isn't that interesting? Ah, uh huh. Stewardess? Yes? We're about to cast off. You see this man across from my seat? It's just that this man's dead. Must be a mistake. Here, let me see. Look, I know a body when I see one. Bugger. Code nine. You're not getting a discount for this. Murder on the Orion Express. Never heard that one before. You there. Ma'am, did you know him? What? Oh, it's just that you both have the same badge on your jumpers. I thought maybe... You belong to some kind of group. I'm Naota Chambers, Vice President of the Society for the Preservation of Venus. We're on a field trip to visit some of the latest archaeological sites that have been unearthed. Or unvenused, I guess. <laughs> and who is this man? Oh, he's our president. Feeling under the weather, is he? I expect so. Passenger message. Beings who are incubating antiviral agents in their bloodstream have the highest priority on life costs. Passengers, please identify yourselves so that everyone knows... It used to be women and children first. Why? Well, on Earth, anyway, in the past, the women and children were revered and needed protection from the male. If they were frail, they should have the lowest priority. What is the point of losing a strong member of society only to have the frail creature survive? Yes, well, they do bear the children, don't they? Was the population on the verge of extinction then? Well, no, not really. Then they are not a precious resource. And as for the children, why save a life with perhaps ten years of knowledge and experience over a wise adult with forty or fifty years of learning and training? It is a huge waste of resource. You wouldn't understand. Your primitive nature explains itself. How dare you! I am from the Valorian Tribunal. Good for you. Tell me, what planet are you from? I smell methane. I'm from Venus. Wait a minute, that can't be. According to this time period, and I know this is a fact, the Venusians died a long time ago. I've been genetically engineered from biological samples found in archaeological sites on Venus. I may or may not actually look the way Venusians once did, but I'm the closest thing you're ever going to meet. 
I'm not sure about that. Now, I can't hold my breath for more than 40 seconds. Evacuation of level 20 in 5 seconds. Evacuation? The gas is being pumped back out. The lower levels are safe now. Sterilization of level 96 in 20 seconds. I have to go through the gas. I have to slide down the rail just at the right time. Got to get to level 20 before I run out of air. It's the only way. Six. Six five. five. Four, three, two, one. Here goes nothing. Oh, thank you, Large Ness. Just to break the fall for anyone who was unlucky enough to fall down that damn ladder. Safety catch for workers or something. Now, how do I reach that ladder? <sighs> Miss Harlow, nice thing, by the way. I know you are busy being a stewardess and all, but uh, do you think that a doctor should look at this man? We're running on a strict schedule, and we're about to serve the first meal. Once I've finished my duties, I'll have some time to handle passenger requests. All right, then. Time to look around. See what's in the next cabin. Hmm, interesting. A group of blue-skinned, blonde-haired aliens. It's been a long time since I've seen that. Excuse me, ma'am. Are you with this group? No. Why? It's just that you have the same red circle on your neck. Do you mind if I take a closer look? Hmm. This looks like some kind of infection. Look, I'm going to get you some help. Be right back. Online medical program. How may I serve you? Online medical program. Uh, all right. Yes. Uh, the entire cabin has been infected with something. We need um, medical assistance. You do have a medical staff, don't you? Please hold. You again. Look, um, uh, Harlow, if I can call you that. Most of the people in this cabin seem to have a red spot on their neck. It seems to be some type of infection. Code 7. Sir, please step out. I am sealing this cabin. Quarantine cabin 72. Thanks for calling me back here. Now I'm not going to get my dinner. I certainly don't think anyone would have gotten their dinner if this infection had been allowed to spread throughout the ship, don't you think? Online medical program. Analyzing patients. No known infections. Diagnosis. Skin rash. Remove quarantine. Bloody computer. Just because you don't know what it is doesn't make it safe. All have come into contact with a similar irritant. I believe it's definitely an infection. I am sure of it. Are you a doctor? Well, in, in a matter of speaking, yes. But trust me, I am qualified. Please retrieve a sample of blood for analysis. All right, might as well. A couple of passengers in the cabin are starting to vomit already. So please reinstate the quarantine in this cabin. No need. I have made a visual examination of every passenger. Passengers all over the ship have the same symptoms. Stop being the idiot computer that you are and analyze this blood sample. That looks odd. Where have I seen that before? Unknown viral agent. Possibly harmless. People on the verge of collapse here. It isn't harmless. And I've seen something like it before. Anyway, I, I've got an idea. Some of the people in this cabin haven't been infected, so... I'd like to see if there are any antiviral agents in their bloodstreams. Perhaps we can synthesize something very quickly and inoculate the entire ship. Can you do that? Oh no, he's dead. You there. 
Let me test your blood for antiviral agents. I do not wish to be violated. People are dying. Don't you see that? My name's Eric Busby. You can use my blood. Very kind of you. Computer, here, scan this quickly and figure out an antidote. Isolating antiviral agent. Dispensing antidote gas in all cabins. Antidote administered to air supply complete. 567 casualties reported shipwide. All systems normal. Normal? You call this normal? You belong in a scrapyard. How do you feel? I just need a little refresher pill and I'll be able to continue my work. I'm starving. It looks like they passed me by when they served the meal. Any chance of getting something to nibble on? Sorry, it's all computerized. You'll have to wait three hours until the next meal break. I can get you a drink, though. Ah, in that case, I'll take a scotch. On the rocks. Finally, back to the first level. Now, where is the TARDIS? I don't think it'll be visible from the end of this bay since it was parked in between two containers. I'll have to walk the length of each level checking each row until I find it. Doctor, I'm gonna kill you. Row one, two, three. Wait, what's that? It's not the TARDIS, it's... Oh my god, it's a huge rat! It's disgusting! Oh, well, at least it's dead. Oh, so that's why this place has been sterilized. To avoid transporting vermin from one port to another. Well, that makes sense. It's a little different looking than the rats from Earth, besides its size. From another planet? Genetically engineered? But who would build a bigger and better rat? Who are you calling vermin, you bag of bolts? Vermin, vermin, vermin. Did I hear a squeak? Shh, you'll get me in trouble. What have you done? Nothing. It's just a souvenir from Mars. You didn't buy anything in that market, did you? It was all overpriced junk. You can get the same thing back on Earth. May I see it? It's like a little rodent the size of a beetle. But they won't grow any bigger. They'll do considerably more than grow bigger. This is an Asterian Weedle. They breed at an alarming rate by dividing like a cell, you see. And the way they reproduce could kill everyone on the ship. If it gets loose, it'll attach itself to a host... Numbing the victim so that the host doesn't even know the creature has burrowed inside it. Then it'll rapidly feed and multiply. They scatter, and then each of them finds another host. They could wipe out this whole ship in a couple of hours. I see what you've done. Flush it out into space. That's probably the best thing. I'll put it into one of the disposal ports. Bring back my purse. Oh, look at that. It's got a hole in it. There. The Weedle has apparently chewed its way through the bottom of the bag. Oh, no. Where has it... Uh... I can't move my legs. I'm not sure. Well, you have a hole on your side. Right there. But it's not bleeding. I am sorry. It's the Weedle. It produces a coagulant. The victim does not bleed. Victim? Oh, my God. Jenna, they're starting to crawl out. Capture them quickly, all of them. Use something. Perhaps that air sickness bag. Now, give it to me, quickly. Everything's numb. I can't feel anything below my chest. It's Asterian Weedles. Where? Section 31. I ejected five of them into space, but who knows how many have escaped. And I have a woman who needs medical attention as well. They've used her to incubate. You'll have to get back to your seat, sir. I'm going to have to initiate a Code 2 lockdown. Which means what? Everyone will be individually quarantined in their seats for the length of the Weedle reproductive cycle. 
while the interior of the cabin is flooded with a sterilization gas. And what about the people that have Weedles inside them? They will also be sterilized. But you've got to do something to help them. If there is an infestation on board, there's nothing we can do without risking the entire ship getting infested. Yes, yes, I know, I know. This can't be happening. <laughs> no! I'm so sorry. It's her or everyone else on this ship. I must go. Please, everyone, do not panic. You must stay in your assigned seating. You too, sir. Really? Do I look like a Weedle? Do I look like a dead rat? Oh, don't get that goo on me. Vermin has been disposed. Searching. New vermin identified. I knew you were going to say that. I'm not vermin, I'm a person. I got trapped in here accidentally, you stupid machine. Target alive. Following vermin, vermin, vermin. You did all you had done was pathetic. Pyrus? Oh, that's just great. I was just about to eat my lunch. That's right, pirates. And mean ones. Now give all the credits. Ah, so you're a mean pirate. And what if I don't? <laughs> Sounds like someone in the next cabin had an inquiring mind just like yours. You're not the only one with a weapon, ugly. <laughs> There. Now to deal with the others. Wait here, all of you. What? They're all down. How is that possible? You mean the passengers? No, 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 no. The pirates. All of them. What an odd thing. This is definitely a first. girl's voice. Help me. Where are you? I'm in here. Oh my god, she's inside the container. Who would do such a thing? Someone's smuggling people in here. There's a little kid in one of these. Help! Hungry. Are you there? I'm here. I'll get you out. It has an electronic lock that needs a code, as well as a key for another normal padlock. I'm gonna get an axe. Hang in there! Okay, that's one down. Now to try and bust open the electronic one. I'll just have to smash it off and hope that opens the door. It's too hard, I just can't do it. Seven. What? You know the code? Are you sure? Oh, all right. Here goes. Seven. Four. Four. Five, eight, five, nine, seven, one, nine, zero. Oh, it worked! Hungry. Well, that's odd. Your voice is different. Hungry. Oh, oh. oh my god, you are one ugly giant purple octopus! <sighs> The doctor told me, of course, this is the level the TARDIS is on. Idiot! Where's the bloody TARDIS? Where is it? There it is. Oh no, you again. New vermin identified.
Would you like some tea or coffee? No, thank you. I've brought my own refreshments. Venusian taste buds don't really appreciate acidic drinks, so we usually bring something a little more basic. Have you ever tried Vronmere juice? No, I haven't. Maybe when we get to Venus, I'll order some in the spaceport bar. I'm going to need a drink. And you there, what are you doing? Oh, me, um, just trying a little experiment. That's not going to cause trouble with our instruments, is it? No, no, not at all. I'm just trying to detect certain communication patterns, that's all. It doesn't even transmit. If the pilot tells me that something's jamming our instruments, I'm coming directly to you. May I have more tea, please? And would you like more tea, ma'am? I do not require hydration at this time. It's quite an unbelievable flight we're having, isn't it? Is it? Well, pirates, parasites, and a space virus all in one trip. Yes, quite unbelievable. And don't forget murder. You mean the pirates? No, I mean that man that was next to me. Surely he died from that virus. Oh, no, no. He was quite dead when I sat down next to him. That is for sure. And there was absolutely no sign of the red blotching that the virus victims had. No, he died before the virus had been released. And by the bluish color of his lips, I'd say he died of methane-induced ammonium toxification. Methane-induced? Yes, that is so. He was going to the wrong planet, then. If he was sensitive to methane, he would have died the moment he took a breath on Venus. Even with the atmosphere forming, there is still measurable quantities of methane in the atmosphere. Yes, precisely. Nyota, that is your name, right? Do you know of any medical condition that your beloved president might have had? I don't know, but you said murder earlier. Oh, yes. He ingested an ammonium sample, probably given to him in his food. The killer expected him to die the moment he stepped on the surface of Venus and breathed in some of the atmosphere. Unfortunately, the killer didn't expect him to be sitting behind a methane breather. Sorry, Vernar, but I think your breath may have killed him. Oh, no. That's terrible. Yes, it is. And who do you think had the most to gain from his death? That doesn't mean I'm a killer. No, but you see, this gadget here that I'm building is a lie detector, and it says that you are. That's not admissible in court. No, but it should be enough to get you investigated and ousted as president of your little group, don't you think? Do you know what it's like to attend meeting after meeting, having to listen to this fat egomaniac droning on and on about his theories and expounding upon his nutty ideas? Which one of you hasn't dreamed about shoving him off the cliffs of Crindir when he got to Venus? Year after year, he keeps getting elected president because of those stupid proxy votes from members who haven't even attended meetings in decades. Code 1 alert. Cabin 415. Stun setting. Fire. Clear perpetrator to security cell 19. Do you think you can avoid causing any more disturbances until I finish serving coffee? All right, all right, I think this can wait. May I have a cupcake? Oh, finally I found it. Well, hello there. <laughs> Miss Harlow, I wonder if I might have a word with someone in charge of security, please. It's about the virus we had earlier. I remember where I've seen it before, and if I'm right, the beings that released the virus are still on this ship. Right. Come with me. Computer! Code 3. Right this way, Doctor. The Chief of Security is on level six. Chief, this is the Doctor. Harlow has briefed me on the way. Seems you've been a tad busy on this flight. What can I do for you now, Doctor? Chief, I know who spread the virus. It was the Bluegills, and they must be still on board. This kind of virus would have been incubated in their systems. It's been wiped out now, but if their plan was to kill everyone on the ship, they might have a backup plan. If what you say is right, we certainly have another problem in our hands. 
Well, let's take a look at the passenger list. Computer. How many bluegills are on board? There are a pair of bluegills seated in every cabin on the ship. Count of 240 at present time. Suspicious, wouldn't you say? Yes. I don't have enough officers to arrest them all at once. I'm worried that some of the others might be alerted once we start arresting them and release some sort of backup virus. And do you have the authority to arrest them? On this ship, I have the authority to do anything to any passenger in the name of security. It says so on the release you signed. Hmm, right. So it does. Good. Because I've got another idea. Could I... could I have a look at your kitchen? There. This compound I've extracted from the cinnamon will have a narcotic effect on the bluegills and the Venusians as well. If you could add this to the air conditioning system, it'll be breathed in by everyone on board. The gills and the Venusians should lose consciousness immediately. Then you can encase the bluegills in your fancy curtains and the Venusians will wake up soon, unharmed. You can then deal with the perpetrators when we get to Venus. What do you say? What makes you think we can add compounds to the air conditioning? Because you've done it several times during this flight. Tell me, what's so special about you? I think you're better off not knowing. Are you sure your compound is safe? Why don't you have your medical program look into it? I assure you it's quite safe. No deaths, Doctor. And no shipwide pandemonium. Nice change. Let's see if we can make it to Venus without any more incidents. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can promise that. Now, to the other matters. The Venusians are finally asleep. I just need to borrow one of their containers. Let me see. There. Let me just take care of that for you. Where are you going? I'm just going to do a quick check of the other Venusians I've seen on the ship. Just to make sure they're all right. Doctor, I don't want you alarming any of the other passengers. They won't even notice I'm there. Get up. I said get up. All right already. Was shooting me really necessary? What the hell's been going on down here? Are there any more of you here? Just the giant octopus. I think it's down there. You haven't been messing with my cargo now, have you? I may have let something out by accident. It tricked me. If that pod beast is loose in here, we'd better get the hell out. Come on! Easy on the arm! Jeez! I thought as much. Cyberware. I do not think that is a lie detector. Ha, huh, it's not. I was bluffing earlier. I am familiar with the term bluffing. What does the device do? It's actually a robot detector. Robot? Thanks for taking out those pirates, by the way. We could have lost a lot more people if it wasn't for your help. I am not a robot. Well, this device tells me otherwise. I've been monitoring your intercommunication logs for some time. Your plan is for half the robots to disembark on Venus, while the remainder go on to Orion. Once there, your plan was to take over both spaceports by replacing key personnel. I've seen it all before. Might have worked, actually. You're involved in this, aren't you? Uh, I'm afraid so. I happened to detect a few robots on board. But how was I to know they were a part of a robot army? We have been detected. Operation jeopardized. Backup plan initiated. Code 72. Destroy all witnesses. Kill the humans. Kill all the humans. Is that supposed to scramble their work? We anticipated your countermeasures. We have taken appropriate action to minimize the effects of your transmission. The secret is to kill the Robot King. That's the one coordinating the orders for all the other robots. How do we find the Robot King? Simple. It's trying to kill me. Hello, my machine. Turn it on now. Mission aborted. All units initiate self 
Quick, I must check inside the robot's chest for a bomb. Let's see, it's it's not activated. We've got to find out if any of the robots have activated their self-destruct systems. We may only have a few minutes. There's one that's blinking and ticking. Level 3, cabin 30, seat 33D. That's the furthest away. My device had the least effect on it. We need to get there, now. There it is. Let's get the entire robot into the airlock. Uh, it's locked. The computer's disabled the whole locking mechanism for some reason. What happened to the lights? You awake? Good. Now listen up. I, Timothy Clancy, authorized captain and owner of this vessel, do hereby arrest you... Name. What's your name? Samantha. Samantha Morgan. Samantha Morgan. By the authority granted to me by the Solar Transportation Commission and its attendant bodies pursuant to... whatever... whatever Galactic Treaty, etc. 2408. I don't need to read all that stuff. They'll give you a copy when they book you on Venus. Let me out of here. I don't think so. There's been several reports of pirates in this area recently, and I don't need you distracting me when I'm trying to navigate through this stretch of space. I won't do anything, I promise. I'm not armed. I know. Did you search me? Damn right I did. How dare you, you pervert. It's legal on Venus, and this is a Venusian transport. Well, how about morality, Damas? Don't think I've ever been there. I'm not a pirate, you know. I was minding my own business back at that spaceport when your machine picked me up and put me on board this vessel. Interesting argument you've got there. I'm sure they'll point that out that you were in a restricted area, though. I didn't see any signs. They're all over the place. Not the way I came in. Well, I hope you win. It'll help pay your fare. <laughs> you want me to pay you? I don't make it a habit of taking cargo to Venus for free. Code 4! Code 4! We're trying to defuse a bomb! It's no good. Computer's gotten haywire. Help me raise this robot up. And now, there. Grab that flashlight. I need some light. Now, to open this up. Oh, at least the lights are back on. Now what I need is some clip wires. Just need to remove the explosive pod. I can't get a grip on it. The opening's too small. Let me try. Thank you, most kind. Harlow, it's probably best to remove the pods from the other robots, just in case there's a backup sequence programmed in. Here's your dinner and something tasty to drink. Smells like wet socks. I make it myself. Better than any beer you can buy. I'm not thirsty. We don't get to Venus for another three days. If you don't drink, you'll be dead of dehydration by then. I can't drink this. Well, that's gonna be a problem, because that's all I got. No thanks. I'll leave the beer here. You'll drink it when you get thirsty enough. Now that we have passed into Venusian space, it is my honor to inform you that this vessel is being commandeered by the forces of Venus, whose goal is to keep Venus free of alien invaders. You're not really Venusians, you know. Aside from DNA, you're all products of Earth technology. Some of you weren't even born on Earth. I've checked. This capsule contains a gas that will eat away at the flesh of all non venusians If the Earth government does not meet our demands, we shall flood one cabin at a time with this toxic gas. What are your demands? All off-worlders are to leave Venus immediately. 
They won't bargain with hijackers. It's company policy. Is it time for dinner yet? I'm absolutely starving. This is not a joke, human. Look, first off, I'm not a human. Second, I've just had a very busy day. With defeating a robot army, getting rid of an infestation, stopping Bellon invasion before it even got started, and removing all the detonation fuses from your canisters while you all slept. Now, that didn't leave me much time to get my lunch. Code Zero. I've been reading up on the codes. I figured it would save time. Nicely done, Doctor. Um, may I have his dessert? Here's a bit on the bitter side. How come you gotta wear so many layers of clothes? You got a nice body over there. We have a fine selection of in-flight movies as well. I don't think so. Come on. We got a long, boring flight ahead of us. No reason we can't spend it on my mattress. I'd rather spend it in this jail cell. I thought Earth Girls were easy. It pays well. We get lonely sometimes. You, you could join the crew, huh? Hmm? <clears throat> See the stars. Visit exotic ports. Clean up a little bit, you know? Do some cooking. A few other duties, you know? Just you and me. That sounds magical. Just wait for me, okay? I'll go put something nice and sexy on for you. It'll be real nice. Sure. Lovely legs you have. Sweet. Mmm. Here's your dinner, Doctor. And a few extra desserts. I'm just doing this as a favor to you, because we're supposed to be on strike. Really? Do you really think it's a good time to be on strike? We don't get paid enough to handle all these kinds of threats. The flight crew have decided to go on strike until the company agrees to have more security personnel on hand. Sounds reasonable, I suppose. I'm sure the company will... Would you care for some apple pie? This ship is under martial law. If you attempt to help our apprehension, we have the authority to shoot you. What a shame. That was a perfectly good apple pie. Here. <clears throat> Come on, this way. Follow me. Down this hallway. I do believe there's an entry hatch on the right. Can you open it? It's the navigation room. It's computer locked. There must be an override. Only the company knows what it is. You two, stop. Inside, quickly. Oh no. That shot blew half of the nav droid's head off. Dead. Hang on tight. This is going to be an old fashioned landing. your day job. Wouldn't dream of it. I'm staying at the Hilton. Perhaps we can have dinner together tonight if I'm not in jail. Then I will help you escape. I'm sure you would. Goodbye, Doctor. For now. 
All right, then. Sounds like a plan. Dinner tonight. Now let's see about getting out of here without being shot. Come on, let me out. Not until we get to Venus. You don't know what you're doing. It's dangerous. Looks to me like it's all run by computer, but okay. I'll let you out when it's time to land. And I'll give you your blaster back once I'm off the ship. You'll be in a lot of trouble. Doubt it. I'm sure the doctor will sort it out. So, here I am. Did it all by myself. I didn't need you after all. The life of a pirate suits you then. I didn't steal his ship. He... Whatever. He wouldn't understand. And how was your trip, Doctor? Ah, lots of bells and whistles on this one. Unfortunately, the Orion Express Corporation is delaying the next leg of our journey. Well, that's all right. Actually, I'd like to spend a few days on Venus anyway. It'd be nice to relax. Oh, good. Great. That's a good idea. While we're on Venus, we'll just relax. That will give me time to catch up with a new friend. A new friend? Who? Um, she was working in... She? Yes, she. Is that a problem? <laughs> you have a date? A date? Um, well, yes. A dinner, to be exact. I see. Is she pretty? Um, yes, quite so. Why? No reason. Why <laughs> would I care? I'm just surprised, that's all. It's a romance. Ah, I see. You're jealous. <laughs> Me? Jealous? Why would I be jealous? That's ridiculous. I have a date of my own, actually. You do? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. With whom? With uh, the pilot of the ship. You must be joking. You said he was a drunken buffoon. Well, he's not. I gotta go. See you around, I suppose. Sam, the room is that way. Whatever, Dr. Reardon. The Orion Express stars Julian Bain as The Doctor, Caroline Moran as Samantha, Deborah Lombard as Harlow Thomas, Zoe Kerr as The Girl Slash Octopus and Medical Program, Scott Z as The Old Man, MJ Colburn as The Old Woman, Ellie Hirschman as The Computer and The Chief, Victor Aurelius as Venom, Mindy Ras Keenan as Susan and Nyota, Jeanette Vinning as The Blue Woman, Christopher Thompson as The Guard, Linwood Riley as The Pirate, Samantha Warner as Robot slash Woman, James P. Quick as Vitmar, Nathan Caldwell as The Clerk, Elspeth Weingarten as Jenny, Peter Walsh as The Pilot. Post-production and editing by Eric Busby and Julian Bain. Produced by Eric Busby and Julian Bain.